Hi everybody, it's Judy here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I want to update you on the propagations that I made in my last propagation video. I'm gonna leave that one linked up here in case you didn't see that and you wanna go see that. But today, I wanna update you on those propagations that I started on the go. And I'm also going to be potting up the ones that are ready to pot up while I have a chat to you guys. And yeah, that's basically what this video is. If you like potting videos, if you like chatty videos, then you might enjoy this one. I'm gonna get straight into it. Thank you guys so much for watching and let's go. <laughs> or may not remember, I was talking about that Monstera Silta Picana that I wasn't sure if I should chop up or not. I actually ended up cutting it up and propagating half of the cuttings back into this pot. Update on those cuttings. Those leaf cuttings that I put in are actually taking really super well. I think it has something to do with the coco coir soil mix that was already existing within the pot when I bought it. This coco coir mix, it stays quite wet for quite a while, so it's ideal for cuttings. And the leaf cuttings that I put in there, actually the leaves look quite vibrant and fresh and really super happy. So that says to me that the cuttings have taken and the roots are taking off in here as well. Having said that, so it's a real it's a real go-getter this one. It's been going crazy. There's like one, two, three, four new, five new leaves coming through on this one. And I'm gonna show you guys the cuttings that I cut up and actually put into water. So I did mention in my last video, I had this theory that if you put cuttings in opaque vessels as opposed to glasses where it can see through, cuttings might do better because the light doesn't shine through and having an opaque vessel means that the cuttings are sitting in a space that mimics um, a dark area like soil so the roots take off quicker so these roots took off uh, I filmed that propagation video I think it was about four weeks ago now and look at these roots these roots have taken off I'll come closer and I'll show you guys so the roots on this Monstera Silta Picana look at those roots there's all those little growth points coming through as well every single one of these cuttings has roots coming through so that is so so gorgeous like one of these leaves has actually gone yellow but that is connected to a stem that has a very a viable root growth on oh no, actually that roots kind of rotten so I might cut that one off but there's a new root coming through there and there's actually a new leaf growth point and there's actually a new leaf coming through on there as well so oh will you please focus and there's actually a new leaf coming through there as well so that tells me I can probably take that leaf off and the rest of this is gonna grow into a new plant. You don't need that leaf, the rest of it will grow out. So yeah, I'm gonna be actually planting this back into this pot here and it'll be great to just sit in there. That soil will be quite moist for a little while yet, so it'll be great for all the cuttings that I'm gonna plant back into there. Let me move all these other vessels out of the way. I'm gonna update you on the root growth on each of these as I go along, but for now, I'm going to be planting this back into the pot. So let's do that. When I first bought this, I don't know if you guys remember me mentioning in the plant hole video when I showed when I purchased this, it had only really two plants going growing out of the pot, but it had two really, really super long vines growing from it. So that's why I decided to chop it up and propagate it all back into the pot. The soil is quite moist. I haven't actually watered it since I planted those first cuttings in, which is about four weeks ago. So that coco coir mix really stays wet for quite a long time. Out of those two vines, I think I got close to, look at that root, that's so long, beautiful. I think I got close to like 15 or 20 cuttings from it. And I don't think I lost any of them. I think every single one of these cuttings actually took or started growing. So that's really exciting for me. I'm actually gonna not change the soil. I know I mentioned maybe changing the soil cause I didn't like it, but as far as cuttings go, they really like this type of soil. I think it's because it stays moist for quite a while. If your plant has already matured and it's already taken to the soil, obviously you don't want the soil to stay very wet for too long. But when it comes to cuttings, they're gonna want a bit of a wet or moist environment in order to be able to push out that new growth. Hopefully transferring 
these cuttings from water to soil isn't going to affect them too badly. Obviously the cuttings that I planted straight to soil did really, really well. So I'm hoping the ones that I'm planting from water to soil will grow just as well as well. <laughs> it's gonna be a very, very full lush plant by the time I'm done with it. It's gonna be so good. It was a bit unruly for a while there, but it's gonna take some time to grow into itself. I just love watching nature do its thing. When I first got it, there I have a few plants like where when I first got them, they just looked really, really sad and really, really slim. And then often I would chop them and propagate them back into the same pot and they've come out looking so lush and so full. That's actually what I did with my Monstera adinsonii, this one here. This was one long spindly leggy vine plant when it was first gifted to me. And I just didn't like the way it looked as one long leggy vine. Its internodes were really, really long as well and just didn't look fantastic just growing out of the pot. So what I did was I chopped it all up and planted all of it back into this one pot. And it's so lush now, like look how lush that is. I actually, I think I showed it in that video. I don't know if I showed it in the last video. I may not have. I think I just may have one night felt like cutting the plant, so I did. And I've got some cuttings from that too. And I'm actually going to plant these into another pot of soil in today's video, but I'll, I'll do that soon. So yeah, I've got two cuttings left here and then we shall move on. And then maybe in a future video, let me know in the comments if you want to see yet another update of these cuttings that I've planted to soil. And, uh, and maybe I'll update you guys on see how they went. We are now coming into winter as well. I'm gonna take that yellow leaf off and just plant that node bit there. And with that new leaf coming out there, that'll grow into a new plant. It doesn't need that existing leaf, which is probably already dying anyway. So stick that in there. I'll give this one a really good water. Actually, I've got, actually, I won't water it now. I've got a watering can, which I need to wet the fresh potting mix, but I'm not gonna wet this now because I need it to sit on the dining table and I don't wanna make a mess. <laughs> but I will give this plant a really good watering later on before I put it back in its spot. So there we go. We have a very full, lush looking monstera silta picana i just love this plant it just goes gung-ho it grows so quickly it's not a slow growing plant at all in my experience anyway i've got another one here i think i showed it in the last video and it grows so quickly so she's a little trooper she really is i can't wait for this one to be growing long vines out the sides it's going to be absolutely gorgeous so let me set that one aside and i think next i'll just quickly update you on the devil's ivy that i cut up from this mother plant. If you remember, I planted half the cuttings in straight into soil. So it's kind of taking, it's taking a while obviously because the just cuttings take a while to take to the soil, but, and they still seem kind of loose. I'm tugging on them a little bit. So I don't think the roots are very super advanced yet. I've had it sitting in a sunny and a warm spot in my laundry room, but it's gonna take. I've just had some experience with devil's ivy cutting straight into soil. It takes a little bit of time, but that's okay. I have confidence that this one is eventually gonna grow quite big. I'm gonna pop it up on the shelf over there in the corner because I gave my other devil's ivy plant that I had propagated into soil. I gave that one to my sister and I'm making this one. So eventually I might give this one away to someone else as a gift as well. So those were the half the cuttings that I planted into soil. And these were the other half of cuttings that I put in an opaque vessel to see whether or not the plant, the roots would grow uh, quicker than they would in a glass vessel. So all of these cuttings I put into water, or I made all these cuttings at the same time. It's um, in a little mesh wire there because it was falling into the water or out of the glass. So I used that little mesh wire there to stick the cuttings through just so that they would sit in the water like that. It's just a little hack I made, but I clearly didn't think this one through because I'm now gonna have to thread it back through the little mesh wires there, but that's okay. So they have little roots there. I'll come through and show you guys again. They have some decent roots coming through on there. Some of them are longer, some of them not quite so much. These cuttings actually did so much better than I thought they would. I thought that the roots wouldn't come through very well considering that we are now coming into cooler weather. But there's only a couple cuttings there that don't actually have any roots growing out of the nodes. So I'm pretty pleased with that effort. She's done really super well. 
I think I will actually be planting this into some soil today. Normally I would probably plant these into soil when they have much longer roots, but I'm interested to see if they'll just take straight away. I mean, I planted cuttings into the soil straight away and they're doing okay. They haven't wilted or gone yellow yet. So I think these will be fine because they've got some decent roots coming through there as well. So let's put that in some soil. So I've got a pot here. It's the same size as this pot. I'm going to use some of my Osmocote soil. Well, not mine, but yes, it's mine because I bought it, but I didn't make, anyway, I didn't make it. <laughs> I just buy Osmocote indoor, premium indoor soil mix because I just find it so much easier to just use. My plants love it. I use this for almost all my plants. Well, actually all my plants. Whenever I repot any of them, I use this. It just works really, really super well. Um, I'm actually gonna wet that a little bit because I don't want the dust, soil dust flying everywhere in my face. Um, and I think I'll actually use a bit more. I'll put a bit more soil in there so I can just stick the cutting straight in. But you don't want the soil all the way to the top so that it doesn't like overflow everywhere when you water it. I just try and leave a bit of space from the top. So wetting that a little bit more. And now I'm going to stick all these cuttings into the pots. I'm just going to have to thread them back through that little mesh thing. It was good in theory. Practically, it's a little bit difficult. I didn't think this through very well. Practically, it's a little bit difficult when it comes to removing them when there's actually roots involved <laughs> while I'm doing this. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you currently have on propagation? Like, have you recently cut something up in order to make more plants? What's your favorite plant? to propagate, like what just absolutely takes off for you and is a no fail propagation process every single time. For me, it's actually uh, the Devil's Ivy. This one does so well for me every time. I've made so many other individual little plants from this one mother plant here. She does so well. She makes like the greatest babies. <laughs> Often there'll be a couple little cuttings that don't take, but I mean like you can't have it all, can you? In an ideal world, we would have everything we wanted, but with an ideal attitude, we have everything we need. Isn't that right? So I'm just going to press these into the soil. Again, I'm gonna keep this soil quite moist in the following weeks, just so that the roots have even more life to grow. Often I've found if the stems or the leaves themselves go yellow, or the leaves rot. The leaf itself that grows from the node can be taken off, but a new plant will still grow from the node. Like, so for example, if you can see here, there's a leaf growing here. So for example, if this one goes yellow, I can just snap that one off, but that will still grow out into a new plant on its own. So it's incredible what nature can do. It's just, it's like it's designed just to keep on living. <laughs> Look at that root. That's a nice long one. Stick that in there. How many? cuttings have I got here? I think I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've got 16. So this is gonna be one super full lush plant by the time it gets big. So that's the plan anyway. Devil's Ivy is just a no fail propagation plant every single time for me. It's just so rewarding to know that I've made so many other plants that nurseries charge like $24, $25 for, and I made it myself from my existing mother plant. Obviously, it's not as quick as just buying a ready, ready grown plant, but there's just some satisfaction to be had from a plant that you propagated and grew yourself. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? So, I actually want to have a little chat about when I actually went. Uh, plant shopping last week. Probably it'll be a few weeks ago now by the time this video goes up. I went plant shopping. I went where, I went for a drive down to Ballarat, down to Formosa Gardens. I've spoken about Formosa Gardens in a few of my plant haul videos, but I just loved it so much the first time I went there that I just had to visit again, and it was so good. So it took me two hours to drive there, and I'm actually one of those people who hates driving anywhere. Like if I need to go somewhere and there's someone else going there too, I'll be like, can I catch a ride? I'm one of those people. But I'm also one of those people who will literally drive two hours to Ballarat just to go plant shopping. <laughs> you know, plants are alive. 
Plants are life. They give me life. They give me so much joy. That's why I will go the distance for plants. So I'm almost done with this one. Anyway, so I went for a drive down to Ballarat and I did a bit of shopping there and I did a plant haul in which you guys can see the plants that I bought from there. And from there, I then drove to Westlake Nursery, which is actually in Rockbank, and that was an hour away from Ballarat. So then I drove another hour to visit Westlake Nursery, also from which I purchased some beautiful, beautiful plants. And then from there, I drove the two hours home. It actually took me hour, took me two hours drive home because there were roadworks on the way. Uh, my GPS kept directing me through the roadworks, and there were some detours in place. And I just, I just wanted to get home, but my GPS wouldn't redirect me. So I just kept on driving, kept on driving till I hit the freeway, and then yeah, made my way home. It shouldn't have taken two hours, but it did. So. That was, <coughs> that was my little adventure for the day. My poor little car held up. She's a really old 2006 Ford Focus, but she held up really good. Well, that, that devil's eye just popped it up. I now have two, and these two babies are gonna take some time to grow. In my experience, a plant like this, probably, I shouldn't have watered it, and that's gonna drip everywhere. Oh well. That's probably gonna take, and especially now that we're coming into winter, that's probably going to take a couple months before it's a proper rooted in established plant. But I'm going to keep it in a nice, warm, well-lit space and keep the soil moist for a few weeks. Um, and then she'll be fine. She'll be really good. All right, next thing. What have I got here? This is a Monstera adansonia. I actually don't think I propagated this in my propagation video, the last one that I did. I think one night I just felt like cutting my plants, so I did this. <laughs> but I'll show you the roots on this one. Really, really nice healthy roots coming through there. This one's been in the glass for about three weeks now and it's been a really decent three weeks of growth. Um, normally, I feel like they are a lot slower in other instances, but this one just took off. So it's doing really, really well. I feel like the last few weeks have been, uh, my plants have just been like, yes, let's make the most of the warm weather we've got happening and let's grow. So I'm just gonna get another pot um, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Again, the same process, and I'm going to pop these Adansonii cuttings in. They've got some beautiful roots. Okay, so back to my plant shopping day. Oh, I actually finished that story, didn't I? I don't know what else to talk to you guys about. Sometimes it's just nice to have a little play with plants and have a chat to them. If I wasn't chatting to you guys, I would legit be talking to my plants because I haven't got anyone else to talk to. <laughs> I don't know if I should just like clump them all together and then pot them all, all in one, but I think if I just position them around the pot like I did with the devil's ivy cuttings, that might work better. I feel like if I clumped the whole, like the whole bunch of it all together, just potted it like that, may maybe the roots might get tangled or I mean, they probably do anyway, I don't know. If you guys live in Victoria, I'm in Victoria, Australia. Where is your favorite place to go plant shopping? Whether it's in your town or whether you have to drive a few hours to get anywhere to buy your plants, or even if, you know, even if you don't live in Victoria, Australia, let me know where your favorite place to go plant shopping is. We have a Bunnings or two Bunnings here in my city or in my town. And often, I mean, they will get nice plants in. Sometimes they'll get some nice plants in that I haven't seen before, but nothing really too exciting or rare. They would never get rare plants in because people would just steal them, which is a shame for all us other honest plant lover people out there who would pay honest money for some good rare-ish plants. So we have a Bunnings and then we also have a plant nursery, which I don't live very far from. And sometimes they get some nice plants in too, but often they'll get a lot of a few varieties rather than a lot of a lot of varieties. So like what I find there isn't really too exciting a lot of the time. What I do find from this nursery is they have a huge range of planters or pots, cover pots, which I'll absolutely love. So I've found quite a few really lovely pots from this nursery and I like shopping there. But if I really do want to find some different type of plants like I don't have, I will need to drive to either Melbourne or Ballarat just to find something different and exciting. I have done quite a few haul videos, like plant haul videos, 
here on my channel. Let me know if you guys enjoy those or if it just makes you like envious. I'm not bragging, I'm not showing off. I'm just really excited about the new plant babies I got and I wanna share that joy with all of you, <laughs> which is why I make those haul videos. I just find, I like watching haul videos, which is why I make those videos. Because, I don't know, maybe you guys enjoy watching them too. The, the views tell me that you do, so that's really good. <laughs> all, right. all right, these are all planted. Beautiful, very quick. It's very easy to make new plants, you guys. Very, very easy. Again, I'm gonna keep that soil quite moist, quite wet in the following weeks, and hopefully all those cuttings take. Most of them had some decent roots already growing on them, so I sh I'm not too worried about that one. So I think the last thing that I chopped and propped in that video was my philodendron micans. And tell you what, these have gone gong-ho, 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 <laughs> with the, wow, this light's really bright, isn't it? With the root growth. And I think I might actually plant these cuttings back into the original mother plant. So I'm just gonna go get that one. I'll be right back. Here's my, oh, I just broke the stem. I put my phone on silent. It's really distracting me. Oh, I just broke that stem. Damn. Anyway, cut that one off. And I have yet another cutting here. So, sorry, didn't mean to do some cuttings today, but here we are. <laughs> all right, so this is the mother plant. If you guys have been following on in all my videos, this is the micans that I purchased in my very, very first plant haul. Purchased four, potted them all together up into this one larger pot. Since then, uh, it hasn't really grown very much into itself. I feel like it might be a little bit more of a slow grower But when it actually came to the cuttings, they rooted up very nicely I think like I said before I filmed that chop and prop video I think it's about four weeks ago now and these roots have grown really nicely in those four weeks It's so interesting. They're so furry I actually ended up I actually ended up um, popping these cuttings into clear glass vessels because I'm nosy and I just like to watch the roots grow. <laughs> so I'm gonna pop these back into this mother plant and I'm just really hoping, you know, cross my fingers hoping that this plant is gonna grow well. I don't know. It hasn't really settled into my space and it's not it's looking exactly like it did when I first bought it, other than the fact that I took some cuttings off it so it's not as long. There's a gnat. Get out of here, gnat. Don't need you. Maybe it is a bit of a slow grower. Maybe it just doesn't like the space that I actually did put it in. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if the philodendron micans has been a bit of a slow grower for you. I don't know if it's actually the case or I'm just not doing something right with them. I don't actually know. I'd like to have a conversation if you don't mind. <laughs> I love when you guys comment on my videos and say, oh, hey, actually, that's not the case, or hey, there, this might help with that question you asked. I just love having that interaction with you guys. It's awesome, it's absolutely awesome. And I really appreciate you know, those people who take the time to leave those comments. It means that you're actually engaged with my content, and that means so much to me, it really does. All right, so we've got some nice roots growing on there. For those of you who are in Australia and you are now coming into winter. What is your, what's your normal winter routine? Do you have a routine for your plants in the winter? Like, do you move them around? Do you take them out of one space and then move them to a spot that gets more sun or more warmth? Like, what's your routine? I have, I have my shelf set up here behind me and I'm thinking of actually moving some of the plants around to have them closer or the ones that need more sunlight closer to the window over there. It's just a constant juggle, you know, of plants and making sure that they're in an environment where they like to be and where they'll thrive and live. And while it's important, like while it's nice to be able to move things around in the home and have plants styled in an aesthetic way around the home, it's also really important to make sure that your plants are styled in a spot or in a space where they still have the light requirements that they need but also not only light like humidity and airflow like i don't hear many people talk about airflow very often when it comes to plant styling or plant placing but airflow is actually so important to your plants like if you think about it plants have come from outdoors where there is constant uh, a breeze or air and even though it might not be windy there's still ventilation because it's outside <laughs> 
So when you try and bring plants into your home and style them in a space where you want them to live, you need to also consider are they getting what they need and airflow is one of those things that are so important I've realized. That's why um, when I put my plants in my bedroom, I always make sure that my ceiling fan is running. Now I know that might seem excessive to some people, it's like you leave the ceiling fan on all day for your plants. Well, yes, I don't leave the lights on all day or all night, but I don't go that far. But I leave the ceiling fan on because airflow is actually so important to plants. It's like they like their, their leaves moving, just like you simulate the air outside. Yeah, that's just something that I've discovered in my plant journey. Oh no, this one's not coming out of the glass. <laughs> it's a bit of a narrow neck there and I didn't cut the internode short enough and now it's stuck in the neck. Ooh, there we go, got it out. I didn't break it. Look at those roots, very nice. Very nice. Okay, that's the last one. And I'm hoping that I'm not actually disturbing the other roots. I don't think I'm doing this very well. I feel like this plant isn't doing well, like I said before, because I've actually done so much to it since I got it. <laughs> that's one of the things, like when you first get plants, you probably don't want to disturb, like repot it straight away or disturb the roots too much. And I feel like I've done that with the, when I repotted it and then I cut it and then now I'm planting cuttings back into it. So I, I think once I've done this, I need to leave it alone for a bit and just let it do its thing. So hopefully that one takes and I'll update you guys in a future video if you want to see that. Let me know in the comments if you do want to see that. This plant isn't doing very well. I'm sorry. I'll leave you alone for a bit now. I think maybe, maybe it doesn't like to be tampered with this much, and especially with plants that have really delicate leaves and velvety leaves like this one does. Maybe it doesn't like to be touched too much because the leaves actually bruise very easily considering they're very delicate and velvety like that. So yeah. Well, that's the last one. <laughs> I have made a sufficient mess. It's huge and this light is blinding me. I've got my soft light here because it's actually getting dark outside, which is why I actually brought out my studio lights, but I don't normally do that. Anyway, that's it for this video. I've made a mess. My nails are now black and dirty, but that's okay. I like getting my hands in the soil. I like getting my hands dirty. And it was great to just have a chat to you guys. I'd love to continue these conversations in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you for spending it here with me. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. I actually forgot this one update. This is the Skindapsis pictus. This is a silver satin pothos. This is the only plant that I didn't actually plan on potting up today because as you can see, the roots aren't actually very long there. They're tiny little stubby things and I'll try and take it out so I can show you a bit better. The, the stems themselves weren't very long and the roots aren't very long either. Can you see? Move this closer to the light. So as you can see there, they're stubby little things. They're not very long and I don't think they do very well in soil just yet. I'm gonna have to wait for the roots to get fairly, a fair bit longer, um, but that's okay. I'm not surprised that this actually hasn't grown a whole heap in the last four weeks, just like the other plants have because the Skindapsis uh, silver satin is actually a very slow grower in and of itself. So I'm not surprised that the roots didn't actually take. So yeah, I just forgot to update on that one because I did chop and prop this in the last video. So yeah, that's that on that.